more than 100 sleek, streamlined engineering masterpieces converged on the city of Nassau in the Bahama Islands to once again run a test of men and machines at the Bahamas Carnival of Speed. Presenting a documentary report on the ninth annual Speed Weeks of Nassau, one of the most exciting automobile racing events in the world. The customs officials have set up temporary stations along the dock area. Here's Daryl Derringer's American Ford Galaxy being unloaded from the ship. Charlie Cobb's Alfa Romeo from the Martini Rossi racing team comes onto dockside. And in some cases, the cars must be unloaded from the cargo hole of the ship and they're hoisted over the side in interesting slings and lowered to the concrete ramps below. When the cars are cleared, the Bahama dock workers push them into an area where they're turned over to the drivers who in turn proceed through the streets of Nassau to the luxurious hotels which will be their residence for the 10 days of the Nassau Speed Weeks and the Bahamas Carnival of Speed. Not all racing for the drivers, also some normal tourist activities as Daryl Derringer and Marvin Panch of NASCAR fame look out over the harbor scenes and take a tour of the islands. Into the night, the mechanics work, tuning the racing machines, going over every part and every component with care. The garages at Nassau are converted hangars from the Oaks airfield of World War II. This airfield has been converted into a recreation center now with the four and a half mile race course, its most important facility. And here's Johnny Norwood of the Martini Rossi racing team, instructing his mechanic on a procedure on tires. Marvin Panch with a bit of clowning, he drove the fastback Ford at the Nassau Speed Weeks. Lined up for the Le Mans start. Augie Paps, Lance Reventlo, Phil Hill, all lined up at the starting line. The Nassau Police Band marches down the starting grid as the racers get into position for their dramatic Le Mans start. 63 cars, and there they go across the track. Now to start the motors, watch. car field gets underway as they move under the Esso Bridge and left at the starting line, unable to start his engine. Phil Hill, former world's champion. Dave Falling goes off the course. Look at those clouds coming. A promise and threat of ominous weather. As they move down into the back straightaways and the back turns of this track. And into the jungle area, it's darker and darker and darker. This is the S.O. Bend. The cars are going to have a tough time. Alan Wiley and Daryl Derringer come through. The 56 Ford finished in the money in this event. Augie Paps now driving Penske's 85. Dan Gurney in the number one Lotus 23. Bill Hill in the Lotus 19. Dave Pauling going down the back stretch into the thickly wooded area of the jungle. Off on the far side of the four and a half mile track, a threatening tropical storm has been making up. It's paved Carl Way as we 
get a bird's eye view or a driver's eye view of this pack going down the grandstand straight, the paved car way becomes slippery and treacherous as the humidity builds up. Maston Gregory going through an, oh, look at that slide. Alan Wiley in the Ferrari, swapping ends and back on the course without a scratch. Look at that sky. Marvin Panch comes into the pits in the fast back four. Too bad. Looks like he has a blown engine. Let's see what happens as he slowly makes his way now into the pit area and his crew examines the damage. Out of the race for Marvin Panch. Over on the back stretch, Penske watches the race. Not badly hurt, but his car is upside down. Deep in the jungle areas now, the light is almost gone as the storm approaches, and it's going to be some storm. Some of the drivers are turning on their headlights, those that do not have them taped for protection and can use the lights, and here comes the rain. In the back pit area, the cars now have their windshield wipers. Look at the wet track. Maston Gregory is back in the race now, and we watch him come through the far turns. In the S.O. Benz, a chicane that was really tricky during the rain. Bandini coming into the turn, and there he goes. That's Bandini in the number three Ferrari, swapping ends, but once again, managed to get it all the way around and headed in the right direction. This is the deep corner. Look at that alpha go back into the jungle. Boy, it's plenty wet down on that track. Our cameraman, three quarters of a mile away with a long lens. Look at that, almost. Wow! What an exciting spot. What a dangerous corner. A flat corner, unbanked, slippery, wet, in a driving rain. You can almost see the rain. A white blister jag is crossed up. We can't see the number. A white chaparral is back in the jungle. Watch them come out, all of them moving. And look out for the traffic. Managed to get through all right, almost went off the course on the far side, back in the race now, and here comes the Alpha back on the track. Boy, that's racing excitement. Moving down on the wetted track, never slackening the pace in this real test of machine drivers and speed and tires are important too. 17 right and left turns on this course. Look at this coming back into the pits backwards. This is Lloyd Ruby's car. Lloyd set the track record earlier at 95 miles per hour for a complete circuit of the four and a half mile course. He's lost all his forward gears and could only come into the pits under a reverse signal. There's the winner, Ennis Ireland. Moves through, drove a great race a true world's champion, driving in a blinding tropical downpour. Ennis Ireland now coming into the winner's circle to be congratulated by the press, to take a breather, soaking wet. A real masterful driver, surrounded by photographers, a true world's champion as he poses with the coveted trophy for the great event.